inference, just like this is a rule of inference. If I have p implies q, I can always replace that. It's completely equivalent to not q implies not p. Um, so, but for those of you who are scrambling away because you want twenty dollars really fast, I want you to take a break because once again, you should focus on what we're what we're saying right now. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about jumping outside the system. And this is kind of the cool renegade stuff that Hofstadter fills his book with. And it's the idea that as you're playing around with this, you're, you're, right now you're just playing a game. And what mathematicians and what anybody human does is when they feel like they're caught in loops, just cranking through pages of algebra and they're not getting anywhere, humans are intelligent enough to stop. They exit the system and they say, I don't know. I don't think this is going to go anywhere. Or, um, well, let me think about why I'm not getting, or I, how might I get MU? You know, maybe it has something to do with numbers of I's and U's or things like that. I'm not sure. You start doing what I like to call meta thinking. You're not thinking in the system, applying typographical rules, applying rules of inference to existing strings axioms and getting theorems, that's thinking inside the system. That's just thinking. Meta-thinking involves you leaping outside the system and making judgments about it, thoughts which cannot be expressed as any just normal typographical rule within the system. You're doing meta-thinking. One of my favorite parts of, uh, of, uh, this, of this section in Gertel Escher Bach is when Hofstadter says, and if, once again, stop driving the drive MU. Um, try to turn to page 24 in your lecture notes. Oops, somebody's syllabus. Get that. No worries. Page 24. Hofstadter kind of uses this as like a, as a life lesson. He says, look. Of course, there are cases when only a rare individual will have the vision to perceive a system which governs many people's lives, a system which had never before even been recognized as a system. Then such people often devote their lives to convincing other people that the system really is there and that it ought to be exited from. It's as if our social customs and our kind of cultures are really just formal games. You know, we say hello, we shake your hand. That's an instance of a formal rule which we all follow. But you know, every once in a while, you get somebody who says, ah, I don't want to shake your hand. I'm going to exit the handshaking formal system. Um, but of course, there are much more radical examples of this. Like uh, I said, Karl Marx and communism, you know, he, he viewed this idea of like, well, look, you've got these people who are collecting money and property, and you know, they're, they're getting someone else to do all the work, and they're oppressing this whole class of people. Can't people recognize the system? So then people like Karl Marx and Fred Engel like start writing in pamphlets encouraging people to overthrow governments, etc. Because they viewed a system and they said, look, we need to exit the thinking system. If we're intelligent beings, we can think on a higher level. Um, of course, I'm not trying to promote communism here. I'm just showing you an example of historical interest. Um, you know, anarchism, socialism today, working peoples, the media. Nowadays, I think it's one of the most popular things to people say, for people to say is like, well, you know, it's just the media trying to do this. Before, we used to never like, just refer to this entity as the media. The media is trying to obscure our understanding of this. The media is trying to scare us. Um, also, you know, the government. The government's responsible. Um, of course, a classic example is also what Karl Marx said. You know, the church, they're, they're it's the opiate of the masses, is what he said. And also school. School's my favorite example of you know, a system which people have encouraged you to exit from. It's like, well, you know, it's just a daycare that we have, and we don't actually want kids to learn and grow up. Um, and this has inspired a lot of new free thinking educational movements, like the Montessori's and things like that. Um, and I really want you guys to think about, in your daily actions, am I living perhaps in a, in a kind of formal system which is acting in a similar way? Try to do some meta-thinking, thinking on a higher level. Um, and is it worth being ex exiting that system? Um, Hofstadter kind of classifies these three levels of thinking. Um, and he likes to call it a mechanical mode, when you're doing 
the normal games of the system, an intelligent mode, and then just an unmode. None modes when you just kind of reject the system. He calls it the Zen way of approaching things. And this is something we like to talk about a little more. I want to quickly introduce you to another. Um, well, first of all, I want to talk about a concept of, of what you've previously mentioned is, you know, we're eventually going to be talking about artificial intelligence. And it's weird because. Humans really like to say that their thoughts are logical. We like to say that we do think in this manner, but a lot of times we don't. We, we like to use kind of just inference about just collective events. Like we, one of our favorite tools of thinking is, is induction. Well, you know, the sun has risen all these previous days. Sure, it'll rise tomorrow. Um, and there's no real formal line of logic that's saying that, well, sun rise yesterday, and thus it will rise tomorrow. And I want you to think of whether or not human, our thoughts, are actually just computations in a formal system, much like MIU, or, or P implies Q, and things like that. Um, and that's going to bring me to another formal system, which I have to mention just because in chapter four, he's going to refer to it. and. Uh, And it's going to lead us to this kind of interesting line of dialogue of when a formal system with meaningless symbols gains meaning. Um, and it's called the PQ system. So we're going to have three new letters, well, three new characters. It's now going to be P, Q, and hyphen. And you've actually got an infinite number of axioms here. And when you've, you've got uh, a definition, and that's that if you know XP hyphen, I'm going to kind of make sure I, I have just an underlined P, um, Q, X. And this is going to be an axiom. Whenever x is just a string of hyphens, so it's just some string of hyphens. So what's this saying? It's saying that, well, if you have something like this, well, x here was two hyphens. So we know that that's an axiom. All right, it's a little different than MIU. It seems just as meaningless. Um, and we're going to have different forms for manipulating and playing around with this. Um, and one rule is that if you have x, y, and z, which are just hyphen strings, x, p, y, q, z, then you can derive you're given for free the statement xp y hyphen q z hyphen. Seems meaningless. But 